Hi, first grade. So today we are starting our chapter book, Ada Twist and the Perilous Pants. And I opened up to chapter one, and the page is um, a picture of a chicken, egg, egg cracking, and then a baby chick. And it says, what came first, the chicken or an egg? And it made me giggle a little bit because we've been talking about chickens all week. Chapter one. Ada Twist woke up to the smell of breakfast. She jumped out of bed and followed her nose to the kitchen, where her father was cooking eggs with onions. He was also boiling two dozen eggs for egg salad. There he, there you are, he said. Hugs in a second, eggs first. Everyone knows that chickens come first, said Ada. Dad laughed. It was the same joke Ada made every morning when her dad cooked eggs for breakfast. They were being goofy, but the age-old question still made her wonder, which came first, the chicken or the egg? Some day, thought Ada, I'll do an experiment to find out. Hugs come first over here, said Ada's mom, who was sitting at the coffee table by two coffee mugs. Ada hugged her mother. The smell of her mother's sweet perfume mingled with the bitter scent of steaming hot coffee. The mix was one of the best smells in the world to Ada. She smiled. My turn, said Mr. Twist, setting a bowl of eggs and onions on the table. Ada took a step towards him, but stopped suddenly. The strong, bitter aroma of coffee above her mom's mug filled her nostrils. But her dad's mug of coffee had no smell at all. Ada leaned closer and sniffed again. Nothing. Ada pulled out her notebook and jotted a question. Why does mom coffee have a smell, but not dad's? Ada's dad smiled and hugged her. Do you already find a mystery before breakfast, he asked. Ada grinned. Questions filled her mind as she looked at the coffee mugs. The day had just begun, and she already had a mystery to solve. As a scientist, nothing made her happier. Chapter 2 Ada pulled out the tape measure from her pocket. She always kept one handy. She measured the distance from her nose to the top of her mother's coffee mug. She bent closer and closer to the mug, sniffing and measuring and taking notes. She could smell the coffee from her mom's mug from 12 centimeters away. She repeated the steps with her dad's coffee mug, but she could not smell anything from his mug until her nose was only 4 centimeters away. Even then, the scent was faint. Your coffee is broken, Dad, said Ada. It doesn't smell. Keep investigating, said Mr. Twist. You'll figure it out. Ada knew that using all of her senses was a great way to gather data. Ada looked carefully at the mugs. Steam rose over her mom's mug like a wispy smoke. Ada placed her right hand over the steam and placed her palm, and her palm became damp. She placed her left hand over her dad's mug, and her left hand stayed dry. Finally, Ada's mom, Ada touched her mom's mug. It was hot. Her dad's mug was icy cold and a little damp. Zowie, said Ada. Her dad laughed and picked up his mug to drink. It's iced coffee, he said. But the ice melted, so it looks like the hot stuff. And speaking of hot, said Mr. Twist, can we eat while our eggs are still hot stuff? While Ada ate, more questions twirled in her mind. What makes hot coffee hot? What makes steam? Why does it go up? Why was dad's mug damp on the outside? Why does hot coffee smell more than cold coffee? Do other things smell stronger when they are hot than when they are cold? Every question gave her two minor questions, and each of those questions led her to four. Just then, Ada's brother, Arthur, came into the kitchen carrying his mom's tennis racket and his tennis shoes. He passed Ada and a toe-curling stink whacked her right in the nose. Zowie, thought Ada. An idea popped into her brain. She could do an experiment. I wonder, she said, as she tapped her chin. She looked at the panic across Arthur's face. A similar one looked... <laughs> a similar look crossed the cap. Bunsen Burner's face. Bunsen darted out of the room. Arthur pointed at Ada. Ada's doing that tapping thing, said Arthur. Who would have seen her face <laughs> like that before? It usually led to something messy happening, or worse. Hey, Arthur, Ada said eagerly. Do you want to help me do some science? 
No, said Arthur, and don't use my stuff. Remember what mom and dad said? Arthur loved his sister, and he loved science experiments too. But he didn't love Ada's experiments when they used his stuff. He was still getting pudding out of his Lego bricks from the time Ada tested what makes things sticky. After that, her parents made rules about Ada, how Ada could conduct her experiments. But sometimes she forgot rule number one, which was don't take Arthur's stuff without permission. Of course I remember, said Ada. I wrote it down. See? Ada flipped open her notebook and held it up for him. I always write down important things so I won't forget. Arthur frowned and plodded into a chair. As he ate his breakfast, he watched Ada warily, but Ada was too busy working to even notice. She scribbled notes and grinned. She loved having a question to explore. It was a mystery, a riddle, a puzzle, a quest. This was the moment that Ada loved the best. It was science time. All right, check back tomorrow for chapter three and four of Ada Twist.